Hello everyone. Today in this video, we are going to talk about the IPsec uh, side to side IPsec VPN. How we can set up the IPsec VPN using ASTM. Okay. And we are going to also see the packet exchange using the Wireshark and uh, the debug command in the Cisco ASF IR. Right. So let's start. So uh, for the basic understanding, uh, I am using the two routers, so which you can consider as a LAN environment for me. And these are the two uh, the customers, and these are connected by the firewall. So in the firewall, I am using this particular subnet. So one side I have this IP address, which would be, I would consider as a peer IP address for for this site, and I would consider a dot one IP address for this complete site, right? Uh, at last what I am going to do I am going to initiate the traffic from any one of these ends So if I initiate the traffic from this end, then I'll and I'll ping uh, from this device 10 10 10 11 and If I ping from this device, then I'll ping this 999 10 IP address I am running the EIGRP between the Cisco ASA firewall and the router Okay, so the routes can be learned from this firewall to this firewall, right? So let's start so I'm opening the one device. Uh, so this is my ASTM and this is my, I think it seems to be second device. Okay, let's just first open the first device. Yeah. So you can see this is uh, the management IP address for this is uh, 192.168.1.150. So this is my ASA firewall one for one of the customer. Uh, I'm going to use a wizard for this to for setting up the site to site VPN. So I'll go to the VPN wizards and the site to site VPN. Okay. In the site to site VPN, I'm going to click on next. And here I need to uh, insert the IP peer IP address. And for me, the peer IP address would be the 101 dot one dot one dot one and i want to use the outside interface for sending the traffic so i'll go and set up this further okay and now it comes to the local network and the remote network so the local network so what is what is my source network here in this case so the source network would be my this side of the network and the remote network would be this side of the network to keep in mind that these whatever the address we are using in the local network and the remote network should be flipped on the other side of the configuration well we, when we will see this configuration on this side of the uh, firewall then we will see uh, that the whatever was the local network was here it will become the remote network in that case so we will see this will be become the flipped and this should be taken care very well in the mind that these i this 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 is we call the encryption domain and in the juniper we also call as a proxy id so these should be very much identical if they are not identical the phase two negotiation will not come up in the ipsec vpn okay so on my local network uh, so the my local network would be my inside network in this case which is the 9000 i have configured that okay and my destination and network would be this 10 network Okay, I am going to use the default config. I am not making any changes because in my further videos, I'll I'll dig deep into this, dig dive into this, and there are a lot more changes that we can do and play around with the uh, with the side to side VPN. So the the pre shared key should be very much identical for if when we are uh, when we are doing configuration for the Ike version one and this is the pre shared key and the pre shared key should be identical and when we talk about the ike version 2 then they have the two set of the uh, the keys so the remote keys and the local c and we look into it further in the next videos the net exempt is an option like uh, whatever the source that i am using here uh, so the net exempt is the additional rule by the ipsec firewall just to let you know that you should not do the net for the source that you are adding in the uh, site to site ipsec vpn if you are doing so then we can use the net exempt uh, for the inter inside interface for the for, because this is my source in source interface and uh, that, that depends upon the scenario side scenario to scenario but we we try not to uh, 
you know uh, uh, send the net netted traffic over side to side vpn okay <clears throat> so this is my summary of whatever i have configured here so this is my uh, this is my peer IP address configured on the outside interface. This is my the encryption domain. So this is also called as a protected traffic. That's fine. And somewhere it is called as a traffic selector in the Juniper. So this is my uh, that uh, the encryption domain. And this is I have configured the IC1 and the IC2. I want I want uh, the you know Cisco the IPsec VPN to decide it by its own because I have not configured the parameter for the IC version two. So the by default it will take the IC version one. Uh, for the IC version 1, I am using the P-shared key and as I said for the IC version 2, it also it has uh, two types of keys. So I am not using right now the IC version 2, so I will not talk about it. The pre, This is a uh, perfect uh, uh, forward CKC. So this is something that is disabled right now, but I will talk about it in future videos. IC version 1. So these are the parameters. Uh, what are the encryption domain hashing and the pre-shared key? It is talking about the the phase one parameters, okay? And this is about the phase two parameters, right? And uh, this is my net address translation. It is not subjected to net network address translation. This is something related to the net net traversal. So I'll just click on the finish, and this is my one side of the configuration that I've configured on one of the device, which is this firewall now let's check the other device okay so I we I don't have any config right now so I am going to ins uh, which firewall is this okay it was having the existing config so I deleted that one I am going to create the fresh one okay so I'm going to the wizard and then site to site vpn uh, this is my this so the peer ip address would be 101.1.1.2 uh, going to bound it with the outside interface so i want this peer ip address should be got from this interface so this is my vpn interface and then the uh, local network so my local network in this case would be the uh, the inside network which is 10 10 10 11 and the remote network would be in this case would be the 9999 so it should be this network okay <clears throat> uh, so the pre-shared key was cisco 123 so let's just click finish exam this right okay so before starting this i want to run the packet tracer the wireshark uh, so that i can see the capture and let me also run the debug command okay So as as I told you that I was running the EIGRP. So let me just quickly show you that. Uh, so this this was one of my interface on the firewall, and similarly I am running on the R router four as well. So this is my other side of the interface on the firewall. That's fine. Okay. So let me just quickly <clears throat> put this. Ic version one, level two fifty five, debug, crypto, IPsec, and then two fifty five. Okay. <clears throat> Same command on this and debug, crypto, Ic version one. 255 okay so this is my max level uh, till that uh, so that i can do the deep level you know the monitoring and the logging on these firewalls definitely we are not, never going to do these debug we are not going to run these debug commands on the production because we don't want any outage there right because there would be the huge number of connection that is going to to be there on the <coughs> on the production firewalls so we will not do that there 
and the currently I can see it is just the EIGRP packets which is uh, you know, flowing back and forth between the firewalls and uh, th this is just a hello message because uh, they cannot do anything uh, these, are, these, these are not the peer IP address for one another they are just sending the multi addresses so that is fine to all the interfaces because I have configured the default on the uh, on the firewall itself so it is taking all the interfaces and sending the hello messages everywhere so that's fine but I can see I do not see any of the, the IC camp and the IPsec message yet right because what what's happening right now I have let me just click on the finish I have inserted the con I have done the configuration on both the firewalls right both the firewalls are ready with the configuration but the VPN uh, the side to side VPN will not come into the picture will not trigger until we do not initiate the traffic on the side to side VPN right so for that I need to initiate the traffic from any of one of the device which is the router 3 and the router 4 okay these messages can be ignored because this is not negotiating anything so that's fine as uh, router 3 so from the router 3 I need to ping to the router 4 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 11 okay cool so I can see that uh, so the, um, the the ping was successful between the devices okay and let me stop this capture as well this is my Vaisha capture I stop this capture and these are my firewall messages okay I'll see we'll look into it one by one okay so first go to this Vaisha capture so I could see that it was complete EIGRP and when I try to initiate the traffic I could see the four messages from the phase one which is for the ICCAM policy negotiation so the ICCAM policy the proposal it's being sent from the initiator to the responder so we can see the security association initialization so this is from the initiator and this is from the responder okay so if you go and check this because these are not encrypted so we can see uh, the payloads the key okay the security association <clears throat> so I am sending the proposals so these are the proposals what are the encryption uh, what is the hashing L, uh, and what is the encryption we need to set for it and the defi helmet group and the lifetime so all the parameters would be going to sign over this uh, this negotiation so it is sending the initiator is sending so from where we initiate the traffic will become the initiator and send the traffic it is from the responder so the responder is responding back to the message and this is the authentication so authentication where we do the defi helmet group exchange between these two devices so the nouns and the defi helmet group is sent over the message 3 and the message 4 and the and the message 5 and the message 6 so these are the encrypted message we cannot see that so the we can see it is encrypted by the encapsulation uh, the esp protocol is running for the encryption for that so we can not see further messages and in uh, after that to, that, that must be after the two handshake it should go in directly into the uh, phase two where it again to the three message handshake and after that it should sending the traffic the data traffic so because we are running in the main board so it it ex, it do the exchange of the six messages four messages are the plain text that we can see and we, we are seeing that and the two messages are the encrypted and this and the phase two uh, it do the three message exchange so this is from the wireshark perspective let me go to the this firewall logging and let me do i doubt because i know this is not working on uh, this i think it stopped working in in few days i, I mean uh, just i think two to three days what i have seen yeah so i think the debug is not working properly on this device because these are the virtual ESA that I am running into and doing this experiment uh, this is my lab so but I think if I cannot show you here but I already have something uh, these were my previous uh, uh, these were my previous debug logs when I tried to initiate it 
so this is something that uh, it, it it we can see when we are running the debug with the level of 255 because it is showing us all the messages that we can see on the cisco asf firewall so this is of the one packet that we are receiving it uh, from the because i i run this command from the uh, from the responder so that is why it is showing me the receive packet from this peer and we can see the cookies so the cookies like uh, because this was an initiator cookie and we we did not respond it back so that is why it is it is it is empty right now uh, it plays a important role to protect us from the denial of service attack it is because like uh, um, so when the response is coming back from the responder to the initiator so the responder will insert its own cookie into the packet and we will see that in response uh, when the initiator will see it uh, his own cookie into the packet then it will think that yeah this is the legitimate traffic coming for uh, for me from my responder so it will accept it otherwise it will discard that traffic right so that is how it protects us from that um, uh, from the uh, from the de uh, denial of service attack right then we can see the proposals here so the proposals uh, so when, when i tried this so it it were having the six proposals okay but uh, currently my firewall just it just have i think the one proposal so let me show you how can i check that so the phase one proposals that i can see um So this is my one of the only one proposal is configured on this so which has the five parameters so authentication is appreciate key encryption is aes256 hashing is sha is using defi element group 2 and the lifetime is one day so this is my phase one right and these are the default parameters in the side to side cisco asf firewall uh, the second thing like uh, when we have negotiated the phase one okay so you can see the various parameters the net net travels uh, also negotiates on it and i'll show you each and so uh, i was talking about the cookies so here you can see when it is uh, it is sending back to the uh, initiator so then you can see the, uh, the it, it has inserted its own cookie so it is good right and then we can see uh, again the packet exchange is happening and it is sending the various parameters the network uh, uh, and the net net traversal and uh, uh, this is what it is processing its uh, you know the payloads and all the nouns and all the hashing and all those things okay and at last if you go at last and then there you can see it is sending the uh, you can see this is the exchanges happening between the packets uh, it is also telling us that the remote is not behind a net device okay so it it, it tells everything whatever we want to what whatever, whatever the parameters we have configured on the side to side vpn so the phase one is completed successfully and the log shows that So in the phase two when you go to the phase two then there you can see the, these parameters so because we there also we use the, the encapsulation mode what are the tunnel is a transmit mode and what is the authentication algorithm we are using there okay and what is a what is a lifetime uh, seconds what is a lifetime second we have configured here and there must be the traffic volume as well so yeah the kilobytes what are the kilobytes we we, we are negotiating on it but these are the optional proposals and uh, uh, the uh, it does not affect uh, anything on the and the side to side connectivity and the traffic on it so yeah so and the, at the last you can see the phase two is completed so this 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 i think uh, that these are the log messages uh, the debug log message that we can see okay and that's how we configure the side to side vpn using astm so what we have covered today we have covered the uh, the side to side vpn us using astm we have covered the basic parameters that are used to build the side to side vpn which we have covered about the net exempt and uh, we have also seen how we uh, how the packets can be, uh, should be visible in the wireshark uh, the four exchange and the rest all one the encrypted ones and we have also seen the decrypt uh, the the debug log messages so that's all uh, for this video for the side to side vpn and there are uh, there are more there are more things to cover in the side to side vpn that i'll cover in in the in the further videos so thank you for watching have a good day